We needed you, Terry. Item number, SCP-X. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures Structures surrounding and including the medical center are to remain locked down for the foreseeable. Makeshift metal fences, covering a perimeter of 220 meters around the medical center, are to be protocol on a weekly basis in different rotation sessions between security department personnel. Any unauthorized individuals or civilians passing the 220 meter perimeter are to be either subdued or terminated immediately. Their body must then be transported behind the perimeter. Level 3 or higher level clearance is required for interaction with SCP-X or SCP-X-A, with the usage of a terminal located southeast of the perimeter inside of a station for the purposes of communicating with SCP-X-A or SCP-X. Any request for termination from SCP-X-A will be denied, no matter the circumstance. Description SCP-X is a reality-altering phenomenon inhabiting the chest cavity in the corpse of former GOC agent Terry Blank, now designated SCP-X-A. SCP-X-A only emulates minor visual, auditory, and cognitive anomalous hazards and capabilities similar to SCP-X itself to a more minor degree. SCP-X manifests physically as a large circular lump of flesh with a red coloration, the length and height exactly being 5 meters, additionally suspended 2 meters above the chest cavity by equally large tendrils connected to the cell housing SCP-X and SCP-X-A itself. A luminous yellow-tinted object is viewable through the fleshy mass of SCP-X. However, the importance and purpose of this object remain unclear. SCP-X reality-altering capabilities appear to only be capable of affecting 200 meters around its perimeter, decreasing in severity further away from the origin SCP-X. However, SCP-X seems apparent in using its anomalous properties with the single goal of torturing SCP-X-A. Tempering with the consciousness of SCP-X-A to uphold, even while the body itself is decomposing and rotting, taunting its own destruction in front of SCP-X-A, and forging transmissions with SCP-X-A's blank. This obsession SCP-X has with SCP-X-A that compels such brutal goals are not fully understood. However, a recent theory, due to the discerning and underlying factors of SCP-X's actions, composes evidence that suggests SCP-X-A's involvement with SCP-X during SCP-X-A's lifetime. Furthermore, SCP-X along with SCP-X-A appears to be able to control and broadcast messages via any cellular or technological means. An example of messages relayed by SCP-X-A can be viewed in the Addendum 1 section. Addendum 1. On December 10, 2016, Site-58 confronted an interrupting radio phenomenon, broadcasting a preset message site-wide on all cellular devices and on-site terminals. After approximately 30 minutes, the broadcast ceased communication, returning back to normal, with no former signs of its existence other than what personnel Ray Advocates happened to capture whilst recording his terminal screen during the event. Addendum 2 Following this initial broadcast, on December 15, 2016, the origin of the phenomena was found with the usage of a machine nicknamed TTAC, with the distinct purpose of tracking cellular or radio wave altering anomalies, the origin being within the Florida Medical Center in Lauderdale Lake. Soon after its discovery, another broadcast site-wide was caught, this time with a series of images flashing images in black and white. The existence of the broadcast was yet again provided by Ryan Advocan during the event. Video Transcript The following footage describes events on December 15, 2016, involving MTF Squad Blacken. During the initial discovery of the location, 
of SCP-X. Zero Hour. The task force units arrived at Otis Gray Park, proceeding to navigate towards the northern entrance of the building, their time of arrival being 12.39 p.m. at midnight. The camera is held by a unit behind the other forces, capturing their movements as they went forth. 05. Five minutes into the footage, the units come to a sudden stop after reaching the front portion of the medical center, splitting into two groups to scan the surrounding area for anomalous activity. Through the video feed, the medical center looks to be in a state of decay, with moss growing upon its exterior walls and visible cracks in the wall's frame. The feed then turns towards a view of the building surrounding the medical center. Multiple civilians can be caught peeking through their home windows or looking outside of their homes towards the medical center. Through Holmes' footage of their television could be shown relying upon a similar message to the second site-wide broadcast sent to Site-58. 032. After the thorough examination of the outside perimeter of the building, the units return to their former position, being initiated at the front entrance. However, the returning of their positional exposed a lone humanoid individual walking into the building. The individual disappeared once passing through the front doors, the camera unable to capture the individual even though the front entrance windows. Discussions began among the units about the origin of the individual and its now whereabouts within the building. Multiple units have their firearms out at this time. 037. During the panic discussion, it was decided among the units that seven would infiltrate the medical center, while the remaining five units stood outside for civilian protection and denial. With their firearms drawn and the camera holding unit tagging with the seven-man team, they entered the building. Surprisingly, the interior of the first story appears in a perfectly workable condition. However, seeming abandoned in fashion series of medical instruments and equipment, could be seen in obscure places. Furthermore, the back exit of the building was completely sealed off by a smooth yellow substance. Samples of the substance were collected while the team attempted to use the elevator to move up to further stories of the building. The elevator did proceed down to the first story, but a rather faster pace than should be normal of machinery as that. The doors of the elevator opening allowed for a clear reminiscing view familiar to the outside of the building. An overgrowth in plant life within shattered mechanical parts, and approximately five observable corpses. The corpses were dressed in both casual and medical staff clothing, and their cause of death was evident to be mainly suicidal, a corpse visibly having several of its own fingers stuffed down its throat to suffocate themselves, led to this theme of the causes of death. 041. Minor reactions occurred between the units one by one, piling into the elevator. Even though heavily broken down, the elevator was still functional, so the units again chose to split up into groups of two. The first team would be in charge of the discovery, the second team would handle the exploration of the rest of the medical center. The cameraman among the units chose to stay among the first team. Reaching the second story of the building, the first team comprised of four units stepped out, while the other three went up another story. The lights on the second story of the building spontaneously lost power, then reignited with light, all exactly at the same period. This sudden darkness, due to the power lost, came with an environmental wrapping affliction. In moments of darkness, when light flooded back into the hallways, the environment would change workable hospital conditions into a gory mess of staggering corpses and decrepit nature. The corpses were noted to all have the theme of death as the ones in the elevator, some form of suicidal action or self-harm. Swiftly, the team trout to room 201 of the floor. The pinpoint located the origin of the radio disturbance. Inside the room, the reality alterations came to cease in addition to the first capture of present SCP-X and SCP-X-A. The room holding the anomalies was formerly an operational room, with SCP-X-A laying upon a bed. Two medical staff can be viewed, on the floor, deceased with the room as well, 
flesh-like tendrils coming from different orifices in their body. Each fleshly pulp, and both SCP-X and SCP-X-A, had samples collected without incident. The first team then turned back to go down to the first floor, and outside the medical center, awaiting the second team to do the same. The second team of units returned, reporting a similar death row of bodies throughout each of the remaining floors. The units group up once more, and make haste back to their starting point to return the samples to Site 58.